Dan, thank you very much. Here with Jimmy Dykes, Carl Lavich, Auburn leading 2 nothing over Kentucky. Not sure if both teams were aware that they were not starting on ESPN, decided not really to try hard. <laughs> but if they want to, now's a good time as we pick it up with 16.46 to go, and we've had one field goal made. Well, that, that lean back jump shot of Sharif Cooper. He's just now watching his two and wide as a freshman female just in his third game. Not a three-point shooter, but an absolute nightmare to try to stay in front of in this game for Kentucky. You'd have a better chance of staying in front of a squirrel than you are staying in front of this guy. That's how good he is. Right, left, shifty, anything with his right hand he can do with his left. A tremendous talent at Auburn point guard spot. I wasn't going to bring it up, but since our graphics uh, department was all over it, we were one for 15 in this game combined before Dante Allen punches one in. So now Kentucky one of seven, Auburn one of nine. Rather, the, to me, the Kentucky offense is completely different when Allen's on the floor and when he's off the floor. Just his threat to knock down a shot stretches you just a little bit. The gaps are bigger. Kentucky much more difficult to defend. Miss for Auburn. Boy, what a start. One of ten. I believe the teams are shooting. You would think the opponent would have liked to have taken advantage of it. Doug Shaw says that is out of bounds, Kentucky. Another turnover for the team in blue. It's two. They were waiting for him to be cleared by the NCAA. Two games ago, he was. As Bruce Pearl said, we'll use him 90% of our offensive plays. He played high school basketball with the former Auburn Tiger, Isaac Okoro. Basically would throw alley-oops by bouncing the ball through his legs, throwing it high off the backboard, and Okoro would go up and dunk it. He's got a vision ability, kind of like Patrick Mahomes does on the football field. That alley-oop you showed in your highlight package, he sort of threw. It felt like the ball was going to get intercepted, and it just was over the outstretched fingers of the defender, like many of his passes. He has struggled from three. So he sets up another one. Devin Cambridge misses, but an offensive board for Auburn. Grab it the first media timeout. We had 16 total rebounds in the first four minutes. So we are on a four rebound per minute rate right now in this game. Hey. Not pretty, oh, but entertaining. It is entertaining. The ball was deflected at the rim. Three on two, four on two. Boston takes it himself in traffic. That was a mistake, and now it's Auburn basketball. His bad habits, talking about Brandon Boston, will not work at this level. And, and part of his bad habits are driving the ball into traffic time and time again, and he's not a physical guy. So contact continues to bother Brandon Boston when he takes that ball to the rim. Cal's numbers, one and six start. They've been three and one in conference play. Have a foul on the floor. No, it's a turnover for Auburn. Ran out of bounds and picked it up. You could look at Auburn, Jimmy, this way. They were 0-3 BC, meaning before Cooper, and 1-1 and AC after Cooper. Well, the AC is greater than the BC in your formula. And, you know, Kentucky again, Cooper not on the floor right now. So Auburn's now back to kind of how they were BC on the offensive end. Not as much heavy ball screen usage. <laughs> the number of his shots continues to grow. Kentucky with Davion Mintz, who is over four today. Kentucky one of nine, Auburn one of twelve. Travis, an Auburn team is going to shoot 33 point shots a game. Cal was not happy, nor should he have been, with his three-point defense against Alabama. He has pressed up in this ball game and said, "Enough of that. We are going to be the aggressor in this ball game against Auburn." Mitch shut off by Dylan Cardwell, 44, the freshman who's in the game out of Augusta, Georgia. Allen got hit hard by Cardwell, really a clothesline. It'll be a foul on 44. Up next, the Big 12 matchup of the day. Number two, Baylor. Number 15, Texas. Baylor's 11 and 0. 11 double-digit wins of their last eight have come against unranked opponents. Got to believe a first-class seat on the jet, Jimmy, for Baylor. Yeah, I'm that. absolutely they are. Let me tell you a good way to judge how good a team is. Are you a team who can make the opponent team play bad? But those two teams can make you play bad, similar to what Alabama did to Kentucky on Tuesday night. That's a, a really good barometer of how good you really are. 
Deion Brooks. That didn't go. It's going to be off the hand of Stretch Akimola. So if we use your, your premise, does that mean the way that these two teams are playing, that they are forcing the other team to be bad, and therefore they're good? Uh, the, I'm not, we, we, we're not there yet, but what I like about both teams is the, the physicality defensively, just watching guys not give up straight line cuts the physical on screen in action right now it's an important ball game for kentucky because they, they have got to get back to where they were last saturday this will not be an easy day to do it jackson that one no good offensive rebound keon brooks Jacob Toppin, younger brother obi Toppin into the game boy the basket looks small unless you're dante allen I, it'd be hard for me to take him off the floor if, if I'm Cal. And, and he's getting better, Allen is defensively. He's studying a lot of film, at least he's in the right spots. Sometimes he still gets beat side to side action, but you know what? So do his other teammates. But at least this guy can put the ball in the basket. He's got all five points for Kentucky. Three ball, no good. Stretch Akambola with a big rebound. And Johnson will launch for the three. That one is no good. Chris Pearl has to be wondering what in the world. Tell you what else if, if, if you're on the floor and you don't have a rebound in this game it's because you're not trying because there are plenty of opportunities to go get a ball good job of forcing Allen to bounce it on the catch good drive finger roll it goes seven to Kentucky for Jacob Toppin Kentucky's offense is good when Sar Brooks and Toppin when they catch the ball at the 12-foot mark, Ravi, and they bounce it, they drive it hard. They don't sit there and play with the ball and become a finesse jump shooter. Our Tigers, one of 14 from the floor. Reef Cooper at the table getting set to check back in. Flanagan scoring production has gone up about 10 points. That ball was blocked by Jackson. You just took the ball into a guy who's blocking one ball every five minutes, Isaiah Jackson. This is a unique athlete, 23 in blue. Put him on the floor, turn him loose, don't give him any rules, and say, just go make plays. Allen, three ball, offline, and an air ball. Hoffman doing some work underneath. That ball was blocked. Second chance, and Hoffman off to a good, aggressive start today. And a Auburn... Turnover, no good battle. That's appropriate for the way that the break is the COVID restrictions wiping things down. But I, I see those four teams right now getting their first choice of the seating assignments when we do start boarding here in just a few weeks. I love the jet. I'm concerned about the guy piloting. Right? To be honest with you. <laughs> I'm concerned about points in this basketball game, and I'm sure Bruce Pearl said Cooper get in the ball game and start working off ball screens. Set your guys just, up. A miss. They're one for 16. Jalen Williams, who's a really good all-around player, averaging about 10 and four and a half rebounds. He misses. It's a bit contagious, obviously, uh, when you're one for 16. Kentucky's caught fire. They're four for 16. Dante Allen, the basket does look fairly big to him at five to nine. Yeah, Auburn really they're trying to press Kentucky out another step or step and a half. That's also the beginning of their rim defense. Auburn's not the biggest team. They do swarm the ball and block shots. But I see Auburn really trying to heat the basketball up in this game and push Kentucky away from the paint. I said it earlier. Kentucky's running offense near the paint. Bruce Pearl said the same thing yesterday. That's when they are at their best. On Franklin in. Akimbola picked up the foul. On Saar, he goes to the bench. Picked from behind. Cambridge. Cooper. Alley -oop. That's what he does. And there's the flush for Cambridge. Tremendous basketball eyes. The Sharif Cooper. There's a new sheriff in town in terms of the point guard that you fear in this league. And you're looking at him right there. For Kentucky as of late. Kicks it, Jackson. That's off the iron. Ball on the floor, and it's Auburn coming away with it. Cambridge again. Drakey shooter after the flush. Knocks 
down a three. Auburn is what, what, 15, 18 points better in transition with Sharif Cooper on the floor. The ball comes at you so quickly, and they do a tremendous job of running off of Cooper, the other four guys, with tremendous space. They're going to call Cambridge, and they're going to get a technical foul. I'm not sure if they called it on Toppin, but his reaction indicates so. Here's the alley-oop. Yeah, Cooper is, but the ball is electric in terms of in and out of his hand. That's a slow motion replay. But if you watch this guy play live, Ravi, how quick the ball gets in his paws and out of his paws is tremendous. Recruiting JT Thor. And told Coach Pearl, Coach, we got to have this dude. I just watched him play the game in front of us, a high school tournament. And that's the kind of kid that is a great recruiter because it's not like. So think about this, Ravi. When you're trying to use your players that have committed as a recruit, that dude's a shooter, and he calls other guys, like, I don't want to play with you. Yeah. Cooper calls you and says, I want you to come play with me. You're like, yeah, you're, because you're going to make my game better. Absolutely. It's an easy sell. Good point. We've seen it with Cambridge. Again, in high school, McEachern in Georgia, he was doing that with Isaac Okoro. And of course, maybe the most impactful rookie in the NBA this year. He's been phenomenal. Mm-hmm. He enjoyed a rough house game, didn't he? Oh, my goodness. The last couple of years, they've had some players who were not afraid to muck it up, but it didn't seem to affect them on the offensive end. There's a bad pass from Cooper. He uses left. And turnover. I thought, Jimmy, i got to believe this game was going to be in the 70s or 80s. It's 9-8, and we're more than halfway through the first half. Yeah, I, I, was, I was completely on board with you. Where's the offense come from for Kentucky? I, I know where it's planned to come from from Auburn because Tree Cooper is responsible for 90% for of the offense. For Kentucky, we don't know. Good drive. That's a good take from Brandon Boston. Yeah, he, you know, he got his... He, 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 I'm sorry, he got his shoulders finally lower with some aggressiveness going towards the rim, and therefore it said bring the contact on and played right through. It's well done. Base again, went with the left, threw it up there, and no good. Those are the ones he's got to get away from. Those are 22% shots, and he continues to take two or three on the ball. Cambridge three, no good. Ware clears it. He's fouled on the floor. All right, tonight on ESPN, the ACC matchup. So think about it. We have the Big 12 matchup of the day with Baylor and Texas and the ACC matchup with number 18, Virginia, and number 12, Clemson. Tigers are 9-1, and one, the best defense in the country. And they go inside and out. First one to see. That's the game. First one to 60, you think, would win this one. In this one, it might be the first one to 60. <laughs> Think about this, I, and we all see the game differently, but you describe Clemson as the best defensive team in the country. I, 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 I agree with you, Ravi. But first of all, the numbers back it up. But when you watch them play, it is, it takes all you have to just run offense and get the ball side to side and, and run any part of your action. They are tremendous. The lean back jumper. Yep. Long shots, leads a long rebounds. That three-point shot by Cooper needs a lot of work. He's a small kid, and he's kind of got the habit of leaning back at times to get it off. And he's now one out of 12 from the three-point line. That's not his game. Here's the teams in the AP Top 25, and, and Michigan's got platinum status on your jet, so they're, they're going to move up. I, I would have them number two right now behind Gonzaga. In terms of the best four teams in the country, I, I think it's Gonzaga, I think it's Michigan, I think it's Iowa, and then I think it's Baylor. And I know I'm in the minority in that, but when I watch Michigan at their best, and all four of those teams at their best, when they're at their best, that's the order. Got Luca Garza, they tell those guys, game day. His, his quote was, we aren't messing around. Man, yeah. he's right about that. They ain't messing around at that, that squad at Iowa. Watch Iowa and watch Gonzaga. They, they feel like business trips. We're here. We're going to take care of business. We're going to leave. Then we're going to find another team. We're going to take care of business then. Cooper, three, no good. They've missed their last two. We won't get into how many they've missed today. 
re a really good scheme defensively by Cal on Cooper. They're using drop coverage. The big has done a nice job of making sure Cooper doesn't get at the rim, forcing him to knock down jump shots. And look, this is a three-point shooting team. Did that one get off in time? It didn't matter. It's an air ball. They're not going to get away from what it is they do, which is, as you said, launch 30 or so three-point shots a game. Problem uh, is today, they ain't going in. No, uh, Auburn's offense with Cooper on the floor, Ravi, it's a spread middle ball screen game. He's working off of a ball screen, getting a paint touch for spray out threes, or he's spreading off the three from up top. And Kentucky is locked in so far on that action. Allen has worked for Kentucky. Boston's drives have worked for Kentucky. Here he goes again. Nowhere to go, and it's Askew. Boston three. That looked good, and it was. Yeah, no, no hesitation at all by Boston on that one. Cooper downhill. Boy, how did that get through the hands of Ware? Johnson knocks down the jumper from the free throw line. Yeah, the size of Kentucky is bothering Shreve Cooper in this game. Kentucky blocks 16%. 16% of all two-point attempts. That's fourth in the nation. They can swallow you up with their length. Let it go. Set. Great set for Allen. They had a double screen at the top of the key. He missed it. Got a foul on the floor against Auburn. It's a drive by Sharif Cooper. And he's so good at getting that spot. But Kentucky, Rag, they're putting him in a crowd, forcing him to make a play in a crowd. Exactly what you want to do to a small guard. So privately, Coach Calipari had some concerns. Boston and Cooper played ball together on the AAU circuit. And obviously, Cooper was off to a fantastic start through two games. He was concerned that, that Boston might get caught up in what Cooper does on the floor. Today, Boston is outplaying Cooper to start, which is a yeah, good sign it, for Kentucky. Right, it's a good conversation because in, in ball, it all starts with can you win your fight? Like, when I put you in the game and dice your guard and Ravi, can, can you win that fight? Okay, so these two guys aren't going head to head right now in the matchup. So Boston just needs to disregard that. Win his fight right now is against Flanagan and let the game take care of itself. Didn't win that one. Nice play there. Alan Flanagan is averaging about 13 this year, almost 14, where last year he was scoring at about a three point per game clip. There's the match that they are matched up. Auburn icing that ball screen to keep them Kentucky on a side. And Brooks cold here the last couple of games. He missed that one. He's 0 for 2 today. Kentucky has used drop coverage on Cooper's ball screen action. That time they were able to switch with Brooks. Different guys and different coverages on two and white. Four, grab it in traffic. Three jerseys around him. And what a look there from Cooper with a flush. An uncommon basketball eyes, yeah. again, by Cooper. To, to see that, Ravi, he saw it before the ball was ever in his own hands. Yep. Fouled on the floor. Yeah, you're exactly right, Jimmy. Before he touched it, his eyes were on Dylan Cardwell underneath. And you take us to break with it. Well, he's a guy that, again, just anything he can do with his right. Now, Seth, you're exactly right. And it's those one-handed plays off of one leg that gets him in trouble. And, you know, Cal talked about it yesterday. He said, you know, this is a guy that's got to stay on his own path, embrace who he is right now, where he is. He just continue to do what I'm asking him to do and block out the noise. I, I think he's trying to do that. I think he's a coachable kid. I think he's got a little bit of toughness in him. The physical play is still bothering him, but man, you're right. Stay on balance. Be as strong as you can as a player right now. Let the game come to you. 
made that three pointer in rhythm. Body goes down, is aware in the paint, landing and launches a three and buries it. And just like that, Auburn, despite making just seven of 28 shots, they have the lead 17 16. No good. Auburn clears it. Take that shot every time, though, if you're Ashton. I got mad respect for Devin Ashton because he had the starting point job, then he lost the starting point guard, and he came back and got the starting job. Put his nose down with the work, became coachable, became tough. I got a lot of respect for Devin Ashton because of didn't run for hard. People wanted a goaltend on Brooks. Looked like he had a clear lane in the basket. Spin Ooh, clear lanes. Look out for Keon Brooks. Technical difficulties. I mean, Dykes, Carl Ravitch back with you. 2.19 to go, and the Jeep halftime report coming up. You, you, you probably didn't miss a made basket, though, during that time. Fair point. That's a fair point. <laughs> We're back. Flanagan just back Boston up and launched a long oh. three. My goodness, hit the side of the backboard. And a foul on the floor against Jalen Williams. That's Auburn's 10th foul of the first half. Check the ball and the backboard on that one, right? Flanagan's shooting a pretty good percentage, almost 40% from SEC play. Kentucky has Auburn's offense out of rhythm. And Auburn is as much of a rhythm offensive team as we have in this league right there with Alabama. No rhythm for Auburn right now on that end of the floor. Take it. Toppin's fifth point. And his brother is the player of the year, Obi Toppin. Great pick of the Knicks draft. Plus a couple of Kentucky Wildcats are playing great for the Knicks. A lot of folks bummed about the amount of time Toppin is getting on the floor for the Knicks at the NBA level. Kentucky should be concerned about Auburn's transition offense in this game. You know how you stop transition plays by Auburn? Just what Kentucky did on that last position. Get to the free throw line, stop the game. And that's what Kentucky needs to do. That's only their eighth free throw attempt in this game. So they're tracking a pretty good number. Drive it, Johnson, gets fouled. Pretty layup. Allen three from the corner net. You cannot come off of Allen. I know you're in that far corner and you're taught to be on the, a foot in the lane, possibly the white line. When the ball gets driven towards you and you're guarding Allen, you run to Allen and you forget about the ball. Cooper, baseline, got fouled by Ware, and he'll shoot two. Greg, you, you can't lose Allen, I'm just telling you. He's tucked away in this far corner, number 11 in blue. Look at him backpedal out of there. And Devin, uh, Jalen Williams just gets lost. Jalen Williams staring at the ball. And I know the ball's the most important thing on the floor, but if you're assigned to, to uh, Allen, that blue jersey's the most important thing on the floor. Allen's got eight, three of five from the floor, two of those three-pointers. So what would you say to Cooper? How would you coach Cooper when it comes to shooting? Well, you got to stay what the, what the strengths are, and that's what Bruce Pearl has been all the way back to his days at Tennessee. He, he runs his offense saying, I'm going to put you in what you do best. What does he do best? He is a go-by-you guard, terrific off the ball screen action and finding others. Look at his numbers coming in today. Ravi, this kid, after two games, had made 16 twos. He'd only made one three-point shot, but he'd made 19 free throws. He is a two-point part of the floor point guard, and that's where you have to get him in this game if you're Bruce Pearl. And you get rid of the lean back on the shot? My question was more pointed. How would you improve his shooting a bit? Okay, we, yes, you can, but that, that, that's an off-season thing that he's going to have to work through. Again, Kentucky switching that ball screen with Toppin, not afraid to do it. And layup misses high off the glass, and Kentucky with a chance to run. Hoppin, out about the corner two. Skid starts it back with Askew. 45 on the game, 19 on the shot. 
Poppin's a valuable guy in this game, Ravi. He's the guy that went out and took on Pippen in that Vanderbilt game, and, and Cal not afraid to switch him off at all. It's a take and a block and a free throw. Pair coming up for Jacob Toppin. I heard an interview with Tom Izzo, Jimmy, and he was talking about with the stops, the starts, the players getting hurt, and that it's very difficult for he, and he believes other coaches, to find the right combination. That even this late in the season, you're trying to still figure out who should be playing because we didn't have some of the spring summer stuff. Do you think that's valid? Absolutely. I think we all underestimated the loss of those non-conference preseason scrimmages and, and the e exhibition games and the, the late start of practice it just for the first time in the history of ball since I've been around it like our entire clock was yeah. thrown off from a coaching standpoint is about the best way to put it there we go again Cal putting top and uh, top and on Cooper long keep your distance they can make a shot over you. You have to get a ball screen to get him freed up right now if you're Auburn. Cooper is 0 of 8 from the floor. He's got four assists. Uh, he's just going to spread it and go one on one. I think no ball screen involved. on Brooks on the floor. You got 3.7 to go. Really surprised Williams didn't fire that shot up. We'll take a quick timeout as they have done there. 25-19 caps. And Baylor. Tough I'm not so sure Florida. For Baylor. Yeah, right, I'm not so sure Florida State's not the best team in that league. Breaking inbound, getting ready. They won today without Scotty Barnes, who's a, a one and done talent. Let's get Cooper and go. Three seconds. Go. Go. Boy. Whistle from Doug Shouse underneath. Well, this is, the, this is the right play call. Just a little bit of a jet screen right there. A blur screen is what you call it. Kind of looking like you're going to run at Cooper and set the ball screen. All it does is just free him up down the pipe. Well, I didn't see a lot of contact. Brooks rotating over. And Kentucky's so good at blocking two-point shots around that rim. He has struggled from the free throw line. He gets that to go. Either way, Jimmy, this is going to be just the second SEC game this year where both teams are held under 30. First one happened one shot. a while ago. Georgia and Ole Miss. And you and I are part of it. We're in, in the books. I'm anxious to see how Cooper comes back. He's been averaging 27 and 10. He has only two points in this game. He hasn't been much of a factor. He's tasted really for the first time getting knocked in the nose. How will he respond in the second half? Bruce Pearl will have that conversation. He's low as far as points go. Kentucky's winning the uh, bench battle. They outscored him 18 to 7, so a plus 11. We'll see what kind of adjustments are made in half, if any. It's difficult for Auburn to do things differently since they are a three-point shooting team. And they took 17 of them in the first half and made only two of them. Austin went behind the back and it's stolen from his AAU teammate Cooper. That's the place you have to eliminate. I mean, you can't get yourself to the elbow spot on the floor in this league and have a loose behind the back move. And that was a loose one. If, you can, man, if it's tight with it and you're low and strong with it, that's one thing. You play tall with your, with your legs locked behind the back, it's just a steal waiting to happen. Buzzer shot off the back iron, and here comes Kentucky. Jackson, too deep, good defense, and it's denied.
good look. There he is, Cooper. Yeah, there, there, there's two parts of that transition defense for Kentucky in this game. Stop the ball, especially with Cooper, but you have to identify and tag that rim runner coming right down the middle of the floor. Sar sets an illegal screen. They're going to foul on number 30. Olivier Sar, another one of those first halves, man. 0 for 1. No points in this vision. Here's what I'm talking about. You, that, that's on Kentucky's entire team defense. I mean, you, there's two things in transition you have to do. You have to know and stop the ball, and you have to tag with a physical tag the guy running at the rim. When, when's the last time in a college basketball game a foul was called on tagging a guy either rolling out of the ball screen to the rim or running in transition? It does not get called, so be physical with that play. One-on-one, -on -one. Flanagan lowered his shoulder. Good defense from Boston. Offensive rebound put back up and in by Allen Flanagan. And that's disappointing for Kentucky. He allowed the eye, first of all, to drive the ball, but then the same guy that shot it went and got it. Blue jersey standing and watching. And off to Mintz, good ball fake, and in the paint misses an easy one. That ball put back up and in. Olivier Saar with a rare offensive rebound. You heard me say it before, the ability to stop and have great break, stop throwing basketball. Mintz was really good with it on his play, avoided the travel kept the ball a lot. Like I said, sorry, it was Brooks who had that put back. What would your halftime speech have been to each team? Well, I think you I think you have to, first of all, emphasize, okay, here's what we're doing good. And now, now, they have missed shots, both teams, but the defense has been good in this game. And Cal has got on the floor now and with his ball screen defense on Cooper and said, I'm telling you, you have done a tremendous job. We have of taking two out of the game, and we have to stay with this game plan because Cal knows how talented Cooper is. He recruited the guy. We talked about it yesterday. He got a little bit of Tyler Eulis in. He's a slippery kid. Kentucky did the deal on him for 20 minutes. They have to keep that same defense locked in right now. And I'd get on the whiteboard and say, this is the ball. This is the basket. This thing has to go through that thing. Let's go. Aggressive, and that's boy, that's just what Jimmy when you watch him play, right? Isn't that there for him if he wants it? Yes, it is. And look at Star after the basket comes back back with the rim protection. But but he's not a back to the basket physical low post guy. So what he has to do when he catches it, Ravi, at that six foot mark is just be quick with it, man, and use his quickness and his length to get shots off. He's not going to go through anybody's chest to score. What you're talking about, Ravi, watching him get this basketball, don't hesitate, face up, boom, let the traffic clear, go to work, elevate, boom. It's an unblockable shot with his left shoulder and that right hand up high. Seven-footer out of France, senior who transferred from Wake Forest. And he was a really dominant player in the ACC, or a very good player in the ACC. Auburn coming off of a 95-point game at Georgia, and they only made five threes. That's how good they were in transition. That's how good they were driving the ball to the paint, getting the ball on the backboard, and crashing the offensive glass. Kentucky has taken all that stuff away so far in this game. Nice green from Saar. He's open. And Boston in a two-man game. It's a little runner, and that one goes 31-27, Kentucky. Greg, I've counted five different Kentucky defenders that have been assigned to Cooper so far in this game. Calipari continuing to change up the on-ball defender on Cooper and the ball screen coverage. And he's done a magnificent job of taking Cooper out of this game as a passer. Very well done, and it must continue for the next 15, 40 games. Tremendous players that are all chasing Luka Garza. And one thing that Cal Terry told us about Tyler Eulis is he would ask Tyler Eulis, or Tyler Eulis would volunteer, here's what I think we should do, and he would listen to him and ask him if he sees any of the similarities between Eulis and Cooper. He said yes in that way. In the way that Cooper sees the court, in the trust that you have to have in a point guard like that, you have to look past the 
poor shooting today for clearly what is such a valuable asset on the court. And Euless was the same way. Yeah, that, that, that's tremendous trust that Cal had with Euless. Asking him, where, where do you want the ball? Where, where do you want to take the ball? And then getting the information from Euless and saying, okay, here's what we're going to do next. And then that's a... That's an uncommon bond between a player and a head coach. And I, I erred in this at times as a coach, and I think the majority of coaches do. They don't ask their guys enough, what are you seeing? What are you thinking? What do you feel will work right now? Yeah, we try to do that with you on this telecast, and then we realize it's just not good because there'll be more Jimmy Jets. We'll have whiteboards for, for days. I just got away from that asking. The, the first four minutes of this second half, we'll just be honest with our viewers. We were as an echo for everything we said. So the, the good stuff you said, I was hearing twice. <laughs> that implies there was some other stuff that I said. <laughs> Stop the ball, find the rim runner. Good job by Kentucky in the transition D. Cooper got a foul on Coppin. This kid's not going to give, give up with his game. And, and what is his game? It's getting inside the teeth of the defense, making plays in the paint, drawing a crowd, and winning a lot of the collisions at the rim, especially for a guy that's 5'10". This time, he won the collision. It gets him to the free throw strike. One of the other aspects we talked about with Calipari and Pearl and the SEC, for the most part, you're going to win because you're tough. That, that's one of the characteristics you need on your team. Kentucky traditionally is that way. This team is, is yet to establish that. Is that something that can be established if it's not there in the beginning of the season? Yeah, it, it has to be. And Kentucky is not the most physical team, but toughness is about doing the right thing when it's hard to do the right thing. And I think those are the plays that Cal, that Cal points out to his guys on film. And there's Olivier Saar with a backside strong two-hand rebound getting back to what calipari has always believed in how you win ball games not home or road it's in the paint and on the glass i love the shot by ask you i think he's a good shooter he shot in rhythm and saw right there boom just the seven foot elevation beats everybody on the back side a little bit different Olivier saw in the second half than we have seen for much of the season. Points in the paint. He's a very good shooter. But we saw that little jump hook in the paint. He grabs an offensive rebound. He gets fouled. Has to be on top's going to get called for one there. He made the point. He can't be a one-dimensional player. And maybe we're seeing a little bit of Olivier Saar in that other aspect. Baylor and Texas Tech. That game is next Baylor Bears have been outstanding. They're the only team that is in the top five in both adjusted offensive efficiency and adjusted defensive efficiency. Both top five. Now that will be a, a, a defensive. There you go, Sar. Get out and run and put pressure on folks. You just got to make the one-footer, right? And that would help. Brooks, though, uses his body, and he gets it to go. Bradley Baylor and Texas Tech after this ball. They are both built defensively no middle they do not allow that ball to get to the middle they keep you on the side similar to the the, the ice action that auburn does on those side ball screens they do it the entire game cooper was so deep he was virtually under the basket but he kicks for a three and the jalen williams three makes it a one-point game offensive rebound olivier saw again here's a turnover And had it. Did he step out of bounds? He did. Oh boy, Jimmy, they had numbers and end up with a turnover. Again, guys just making a play out of the crowded corner. They continue to step on that sideline and it drives the coach nuts. There's really, right, there's really no excuse for it. Gets a little more size in there. Stretch Akambola. Sophomore in 13. There's a hard kick. And a foul is going to be called on Brooks. We'll send Alan Flanagan to the line. Good hard drive by Flanagan. A physical kid. You know, the three balls not falling for Auburn right now. Two out of 18. Bruce is a guy that loves a three. 
They love to win more than that. And it looks like he's told his guys, look, right now, we, we've got to drive this thing, get ourselves to the free throw line, and turn this thing into a little bit of a push and shove match and see if Kentucky wants to stay in the ring with us. The Pearls team has won five in a row right before SEC play. Then they lost four games in conference to start. One of those was with Cooper, and the second one was with Cooper, and they're one and one in those games. This is anyone's game, but 13-25 to go, 37-36 in favor of Kentucky. It's Kentucky, three and one. Everybody's chasing Alabama in this league. And Alabama with a game today at Ar against Arkansas at home. Not sure the status of Herb Jones. Bruner is out. Yeah, you, you don't want to fall two games behind Alabama the way they look Tuesday night in rough. I, I wouldn't if I was in this league. The fact that Herb Jones has been moved uh, not out for a long period of time and moved possibly to play today is huge. Mitch threw up an alley -oop. Werner went to get it, but he got it on the ground and then went back up with it. Really good two-man middle ball screen game by Mintz that time. I, Mintz is really good in the paint as well because he makes every play off of two feet. You, you seldom see Mintz charge in any crowd play. Three ball drained, and all of a sudden, the basket's starting to get the balls going through them. And sometimes, they change, sometimes they change the nets at halftime. <laughs> they, they may have changed the goals. Six of 11 and four of eight. Kentucky six of 11, Auburn four of eight. This half, that one no good. A chance for Auburn to grab a lead. Got to make the ones off the clean pin down. Flanagan feels it, no good, and a long rebound of Dante Allen. Watch Allen, he's open, that's a three, and usually automatic it goes in and out. Foul on where you can see Allen's eyes light up. Nobody on him, and he rimmed a three in and out. Yeah, he knows it too. My bad. But well, Auburn are very fortunate. And you, I talked about how you defend Auburn's transition game with Kentucky. It's the ball is the most important thing, and tagging Allen is probably number two. Back cut, he had him his right, he missed the reverse. Good job by Toppin not giving up on the play, and that yeah, defense absolutely. caused Cambridge to go reverse. Where backs in deep, tries to go to that shoulder of the right. This is the rebound put back up and in. I think it was Davion Mintz who may have got that. Quick shot, buried. Alan Flanagan getting warm here. All those Kentucky or Auburn guards, excuse me, Rad, are so good off the ball fake and the side steps into the three. Flanagan executed it with perfection. Kentucky doing some damage in this second bowl of fouls once every five minutes. And he got the most of that one. Free throw made by Ware. And one of the things that we watched when Kentucky was drummed by Alabama was Alabama out toughed them. And that was part of what Calipari and the staff emphasized during a couple of days between the loss on Tuesday and then this game here today. And some of the toughness generally will result in the other team getting aggravated, getting frustrated. Maybe you see that with Akinbola. Could a little bit. I, I, Kentucky shrunk from that moment the other night, rather. You're on the call, and they just, and Alabama was a better team. Uh, and, and Alabama is the better team. If they, if they play the game again right now, they can, Kentucky can catch up with them, absolutely. Alabama's injuries, it's a big question in this league right now. But when they're at their best, Alabama, they are the most difficult team to defend in this league because of their perfect spacing, how they spread the floor. And they got guys that have a cockiness about them when they have that ball in their hands as a driver or a shooter. Cooper got stuck in the lane. Dante Allen tied him up. Jump ball. Arrow goes to Auburn. Kentucky has pretty much taken Cooper out of the game in terms of transition plays. He's gotten a couple of them, but not nearly as many as he's had his first two ball games, and they have made life very difficult for two and white. Ask you checking him right now. Flanagan left hand. Tough shot, too, as he goes to the right, and he's able to bank it in. 
Yeah, just out of respect for Cooper in the corner, Askew doesn't come off. And normally you don't leave a shooter, but they have so much respect for this kid as a playmaker. Askew stays attached and allows the driver. Got him in the face, too. Take a look at this man, but. Cooper checking his lip, checking his gums, checking his chicklets, make sure they're all there. May not be telling the whole story. Maybe there was more contact. Forty-three all as we head to the midway point of the second half. Cooper continues to try to drive where he had his man open underneath. He, he missed him. Billy Cardwell was cutting right through the paint. Flanagan's thinking one-on-one. -on -one. Get Cambridge three. Bang, Devin Cambridge. Drive and spray it, man. That, that is Auburn's offense. Always under Bruce Pearl. If you come off for a half second and try to early help, Auburn will burn those nets. It's hard drive. That one was denied at the rim. I believe Jalen Williams contested it. Cooper to the hole. He gets fouled. He'll go to the free throw lines. Auburn begins to exert its will. Foul on where? Look at Kentucky, Rabbi. They've already fouled now eight times in this second half. And the reason why, because Auburn is winning the point of attack for the most part on those drive plays. Auburn's driving it, getting fouled. They're now driving it, spraying for threes. And if you can't stop Cooper in transition prior to him getting to the restricted arc, he's going to win the collision. And I'm very impressed for a small guy who wins that collision time and time again. You're a great free throw shooter. It, it feels like Cooper has got a lot of movement in the free throw beyond the leaning back. The feet don't appear set. Well, let's look at it here. Well, I'll get his number for you after the game and you have that conversation with him. It was a really good analysis by you. I if you're falling, it. you're the free throw shooter. You're the guy. No, it, it, and we do have a DVD out on it. If you do fall back as a shooter a little bit at that free throw strike, you're always going to be inconsistent. Well, the first two games were, were historic. 26, 9 assists. 28, 12 assists. Today he's got 7 and 5. And he's going to be in exclusive company, even with the shooting performance today, given his assists and total points. Askey lost it out of bounds. It's a turnover. Well, seeing uh, what his teammate Justin Powell, two of the nine guys this year in college ball with a game of, what, 28 and 12? What's the number yep. exactly? I think it is. There's no Powell today, and there's obviously no Terrence Clark. So both teams missing key players. And Star comes away with one. Pass it to Mintz, gets it back. Mintz is in the paint. Boston almost uses him like a screen. Just a shot. Powell on the floor. Looks based on the reaction. It's going to be called against Cardwell. No Dante Allen shows defensively you can shrink the court if you Auburn. You're not worried about the gravity ability really of anyone other than this. Oh, he shot that up, missed it. Two blue shirts go after it. Flanagan battled him. We got a two-on-one. That's just a great left-handed pass. Boy, you think, okay, alley oop, but instead he goes left-hand pass to Cambridge for a layup. The arsenal of Sharif Cooper. We're getting shots in rhythm. They were finding the open man. They were making buckets in transition. And was that just a one-off? Like, what happened to that group? Yeah, it, it looks like a one-off at this point. It's amazing to me. Kentucky ranks in the bottom 15% in the nation in half-court offensive efficiency. 
the bottom 15% in the nation. And they're not going to improve on that number in this ball game today. They have struggled to have any type of flow, any type of real threat. Again, Dante Allen not on the floor to stretch things. And if you're Auburn, you can just kind of back off, be heavy in your gaps, full body gap help if you want. Why don't we take a time off? Let, 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 let Big Blue Nation simmer a little bit. Let him simmer. Let's go. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. That's a that's like a first. Cal comes back with Dante Allen now with under eight minutes to go. The offense will look different on the other end. And we'll see if Kentucky can capitalize on it. Open the hole. Great jump off and an easy flush. Really good pass again. Cardwell the benefactor. When, when Sharif Cooper is in a middle ball screen. He knows where the ball is going to be three or four seconds ahead of everyone else. His first bounce rabbit, he knows who's going to get the ball. It's just a matter of being patient and delivering it right on the numbers. Where were the points come from Big Blue? Boston kicks to Mince. He's been off today. He'll still fire away and bury that one. With a good rise up by Mintz. Defense wasn't really in his airspace, giving him a little bit more ability to see the rim. Now Kentucky with a 2-3 zone. Could this change the flow, the complexion of the game? Cal's going to roll the dice right here. He's got a big zone guy. If it works, he'll stay with it. If not, right back out. For the four steps into the lane. The harder it goes, the big shot for Sharif Cooper. Bradley, when you're playing a 2-3 zone, you cannot allow the guard up top to split the two. Into a turnover, and he did. Got so close to Brooks with the handoff, lost it there, and then knocked out of bounds. Just, just driving it into a no play part of the floor. And there's what I'm talking about by Cooper, man. He, he knew from the time right there, he knows where he's going with the ball. He says, When am I going to have a little bit of an opening to get it there? And a really good slide by Cardwell out of it. And there's the drive against the zone. Sar is too buried late. The zone's too flat. Cooper makes him play. Four three. That's way too long and Ooh. strong. And Boston passes. There's, there's been a few of those. Ooh. There's a bad pass and a turnover. Four rises, misses. The tip is good from Flanagan. I'm telling you, in, in this game, an eight point lead, it feels like a 15 point lead. Does it not? With the struggles that Kentucky's having scoring? Yeah. Four again, and right now Cal may have a timeout. It's a 10-point lead for Auburn. Largest of the day, JT Thor takes advantage. The defense on the floor now, so the habit pass isn't going to work. Take what the game gives you, read what the game gives you, and make those plays. Biggest spot of this game with five and a half to go and a 10-point Auburn lead. Tried to run an elevator play for Allen. Good drive. That's a tough drive there, Keon Brooks. The best offense for Kentucky the rest of this game is to put Allen on the corner and drive the ball at his side. Make Auburn make a decision. Am I coming off of Allen to help? If not, Kentucky attack that rim. Like that. Good D by Ware went straight up. Cooper's ball ended up getting nothing. And here comes Kentucky. It's in the paint. That's good. And a four-point run here for Kentucky. Tremendous hesitation by Mintz. Had he shot it on his natural speed, his natural rhythm, the thing would have got eaten up by a shot blocker. But Mitch drove that thing rabid and hesitated. He said that very experienced guard play. Watch the drive by Mitch. Drive it. If he takes the natural step up and just that little hit right there, he actually shot the ball on the way down. Had he yep. not done it, his shot would have been blocked. Thought about that pass to Cardwell on the ground they go and it is out of bounds on Auburn. It'll be Kentucky basketball. 
Rebbe, it's a close game with 4.35 to go. So for the first 35 minutes, both teams have done their homework. And, and now it's time to pass the test. And for Kentucky, you're, you're on the road. You're in a ball game that's still a winnable game. Can you, can you finish off the test part of the game right now and come back and win this thing? Askew, big three in the corner, no good. Battle for the rebound, Brooks in four. And that's a good tug of war. The ball will go with Kentucky on the possession arrow. That's what Keon Brooks brings to Kentucky. Yeah, he's kind of a, a, a playmaking three or four, wherever Kyle wants to play. Physical. Yeah. Four of the pack. It wasn't just a pass, it was a total execution of baseline out of bounds under by Kentucky. You, we, we all know this, Cal knows it. Auburn is the best in college ball at taking away your baseline out of bounds under plays. And the one time you take it for granted, Bruce Pearl is going to take it from you. Now he's got four. Bruce Pearl went to his wide flex action. That's kind of his way to close out ball games. It started back at probably at Milwaukee, if not Tennessee. But you'll see three guys across the baseline now, Rad, with two guards wide and high up top, running some flex action using a little bit of clock. At times, Bruce Pearl guards his own guys, and that's a great way to do it as a coach. To make sure you're taking good quality shots right now. Well, Flanagan nearing the 20 point mark. The sophomore out of Little Rock, averaging about 14 a game. He grows to eight with four to go. Kentucky to the free throw line. Both teams now in the bonus. Dante Allen is as good a free throw shooter as you're likely to find. And he missed. About an 84% free throw shooter, and it goes hard off the iron and out of bounds. Four to go. Auburn up by eight. See if Kentucky me. and with Michigan's loss, do they rescind their platinum status? No, no, no. They're, they're still there. They're just going to, they're, they're the fourth team to board now as opposed to the second. We know college basketball has now officially begun with Reese Davis in our ear. We've messed around at other sports for the last three or four months, but three or four days preparation, bam, RD on top of everything today in college basketball. And he has to be given with the company he keeps. Yeah, that's, that's true. You rely on Reese for that for sure. It's just team. another three. You keep this thing off a little bit from the outside today. So an eight-point game. Every trip down for Auburn critical. Spread flex action. Using a little bit of clock by Pearl. Got a good shot. Where to the rack? Oh, he missed an easy layup. He went with his left hand. Hooper stood in his way, but that's a layup that he's got to make. Rabbi, do, do, do you understand as, from the coach how hard it is at this level to get the ball near the rim? It's extremely hard. A lot of things have to go in your favor to get it there, and when you do, you have to finish those shots. Cooper again lazy with that left hand, a two-on-one. He gets the layup to go. Turnover. And that was big. It could have been a ten-point game, and Cooper just. And that was kind of habit pass by him, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yep. Kentucky's defense on Cooper has been very good enough to win this game. The lack of offense by Kentucky continues to be the real problem. Right, Flanagan, the interior pass. Where with a block? And here comes Kentucky. So stay with the Wildcats. Cooper is, he, he's so good with both hands at times he's a little overconfident with it because that's a very hard pass to make 
across he, his body his momentum everything's taking him to his left and he's throwing it back to the right side of his body with his left Mint sits Allen is back on the floor for Kentucky down six with two ten to go Askew wide open lays it up and in good take by Devin Askew yeah, I, I'm fine with Askew. I, I think he's very solid at that point guard spot. Kentucky has a, a lot of issues, but, but, but this kid is no longer in the top five in terms of issues. He, he, he's solid. Flanagan using that body, and that's good defense by Devin Askew. Back to back trips. Askew offensively and defensively. The drive and the bucket by Askew. He's taking over. Yeah, I like him a lot. I, I, again, he's got some toughness about him. He's got some punch about him. He got he got knocked down by a lot of people. And all he's done is continue to come back and fight, and now it's a one possession game. Cooper Rally, you don't want to pass. Rally, the the, the the to be that fearless in a one possession game to make that pass, that is uncommon stuff. By Sharif Cooper. I know his numbers are way off, but he can dump, he can do some stuff now that you just can't coach. One hand ball left handed alley -oop off the dribble. From the Allen side, ask you. Ah! And a flush. Jacob Toppin throws it down. Yeah, you came to ask you, uh, excuse me, ask you came to Allen's side. Allen's guy couldn't help off, and Toppin was the guy that finished it off on the baseline cut. Two point game, 45 seconds to play. Brooks hedges on Cooper. He goes to the rack, lays it up and in. Sharif Cooper. Askew, he'll get fouled by Williams, and he'll go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Well, I'm going to say it again. You might as well try to stay in front of a squirrel. He's trying to stay in front of Cooper. He's so slippery and does not give up on the bounce when you go through the first contact with him. There's a good play. You get Allen on the same side of the floor as a driver, and you put the defense in a bind. That time, Toppin's the guy that paid it off. Huge free throws for Devin Askew. First one he is good. Just a reminder, Kentucky, Georgia, 7 Eastern time on the SEC Network next Wednesday, Auburn and Arkansas at 9 o'clock Eastern time. That's the SEC Network. Two games, and Kentucky has dominated Georgia. Won 14 in a row, 17 of 18. They want to win this one. They're down by three with Askew's second free throw. No good. Rebound. Keon Brooks has it tied up. Jump ball, Doug Shaw says, and that's Auburn basketball. Boy, that Keon Bricks almost went. Actually, he did. He goes and makes the play that Kentucky had to have off the miss. Right there, just comes up with it. Yeah, I, and Kentucky fans are going to say there was a foul before the jump ball. I'm not so sure there wasn't in contact on Brooks's arm. Asking the to sit down a little yeah. bit. Uh, Kentucky's got time right now defensively. Come at the full court pressure, make it tough to get it in. Can you get a trap? Can you get a turnover? And then at some point you're going to have to bring it, up, otherwise the shot's going to clock's going to expire on you. Brooks came late. Cal screaming about. <laughs> Kentucky puts. I'm pretty sure it was Thor. They got fouled, Grabby. So you're putting, you could just choose a guy. Thor's a guy. I think he's 65% in conference play from the free throw stripe. Could reclassify. Should still be a senior in high school. Yep. Just really coming on, man. 70% on the season. And he's, he's a tough kid, and... and Tough guys make free throws in this situation. I always thought as a coach, I, I'm not so sure I want my highest percentage free throw guy there. I want my toughest guy there. And th this is, I think this is one of those kind of kids. I, I, if you're Pearl, you trust Thor right now on this line. Make or miss. As soon as he got fouled, he's like, you, you just fouled the wrong dude, and I'll go show you. I, I think that's the swagger that he brings. 
205 out of Anchorage, Alaska, knocks them both down. And the lead grows to five with 18 seconds to go. Four will go to the bench. Auburn, don't press right here. There you go. Get, get, get your defense back to make it tough on Kentucky. Stay attached to Allen and Mitz. That was Allen. He missed a three rebound Auburn. And it looks like Auburn is going to win their second conference game. Kentucky's going to drop to three and two and four and eight on the season. Rabbits on a day that Auburn four out of 23 from the three-point line a team that comes in making 10 three-point shots a game They take 30 the three ball doesn't fall for Auburn today But they get enough body blow baskets get to the free throw line just enough And it's the inability of Kentucky again on offense That has them looking at that now three and two record unless something yep. crazy happens the final 10 59 would match their lowest season output and Reese I'm getting the impression. We didn't make it did we? Not quite Carl Baylor in Texas Tech that game has started Texas Tech with a quick 3 nothing lead They're on ESPN news As soon as you guys finish we'll get you to love it wasn't for lack of effort Seven point game offensive foul and that'll do it where just ran over Devin Cambridge yeah, that, that, that was all of a frustration foul by Ware. Watch Ware right here. Just goes in, boom. And there was no need for that. I mean, to ask you had a clear path to go. And a lot of frustration, I, I, I'm sure, not only with Cal and his guys, but Big Blue Nation right now. They dropped the three and two and have still a lot of questions after this one. Well, there's two things that you take away from it. Kentucky continues to be a mystery, but Sharif Cooper plays with incredible confidence.